What's up guys, Brian Lovett, AKA B-Love. Today we're going to be talking about printing COVID masks for doctors. Obviously coronavirus is top of mind for everybody in the world right now. We've got tens of thousands of new cases in the United States alone, and our frontline workers, our hospital doctors and nurses are running out of personal protective equipment. That means they're running out of masks, they're running out of face shields and just basic equipment that helps them care for patients and also protect themselves in the process. Now, as a maker, somebody with a 3D printer, how can you get involved and how can you help? Well, there are a number of ways. First, you wanna to go to Mask for Docs. I'm gonna drop a link in the description. It's a Slack channel. What you're gonna to wanna to do is go there and get in touch with the people in your community and figure out the needs of the doctors in your area. Companies like Prusa, which has over a thousand 3D printers, are 3D printing face masks. These are shields that essentially wrap around the head and provide a clear, transparent shield in front of your face. This is the preferred method that most hospitals would like. The difficulty with those is that the shield itself needs to be cut with a laser cutter, and those can be difficult to come by. Now, there are a number of people in different states, people in California, for example, that you can ship your 3D printed pieces to, and they will add the face shield that they're laser cutting themselves and then ship it out to hospitals around the country. That's a good option if you can. Also, if you go to the Masks for Docs Slack channel, there are individual hubs for your general area, like Colorado, for example, where people can tell you where to send items to, they can tell you how to get them distributed and get them into the hands of the people that need them the most. Now, I'm gonna drop another link in the description that shows why the face shields might be the better way to go. Some of these individual respirators like this design uh, can be cumbersome and they don't get a tight seal across the face for all different body types and face shapes. So some of the hospitals are recommending that you go with the shields. I worked with a couple of local ER physicians that I happen to be friends with, and they had been prototyping, working on these, and testing these for the last few days. And so this is the design that they're happy with, that they wanna go with. And you can see this front piece just snaps over. You put the cloth filter in between, and then of course this piece snaps onto the back. So you've got that nice area in between that can be filtered and then you just connect some elastic bands. Now, this is a bad copy, this is a bad print, that's why I'm handling it like this. I'll show you some things I did to cut down on the print times and also increase the print quality. So that's what the rest of this video is really going to be focused on. Now, the first thing you'll notice about this is when you print it like this on the print bed, it has some pretty decent angled overhangs. And it's recommended that you pet print this in PETG rather than PLA just because there's a little bit of extra flexibility which is needed. Now, as you can see, because of my print settings that I had originally when I printed this, the overhangs are really awful. I mean, they're just breaking apart on both this nose piece and on the upper part that goes near your lip. So how was I able to correct that? Cut off two hours of print time per mask and also get nearly flawless copies. And the reason this one's vacuum sealed is because this one is actually going to go to a doctor in a hospital. And so what I'm doing is, when I'm done printing these, I'm using protective equipment. I'm using gloves, I'm using a mask myself, and then I'm vacuum sealing these in a package so that they can be individually used by the doctors without risk of infection, or at least with minimal risk of infection. I'm also cleaning my print bed with as close to pure alcohol as I can in between prints so that the print bed itself is also nice and clean. So you can see on this one, and I apologize for it being in the protective film, but again, I'm printing these for doctors. Uh, this nose piece, this piece on the upper lip, no longer has those horrible overhangs. And again, this piece that goes on the nose also has perfect overhangs. So this is a good print. I also stopped and printed these at 0.3 millimeters, which default 0.2, you can cut about a third of your print time. So this went from about an eight hour print to a six hour print, and I'm printing two at a time. My print bed is big enough to fit two at a time, and that includes this outer mask piece and the two inner pieces, as you can see. There you go. When you check the platter, you can see the layout of both pieces being printed simultaneously. So how did I fix the overhangs and these bridging layers that are really, really bad on this first print and get those perfect prints? Well, the big thing is using a temperature tower like this one, and I'll drop a link in the description to this model specifically. 
But what this one does, and it's really vital for PETG, my PETG that I'm using is Amazon Basics. And you can see the, the rated temperature is 230 to 250 degrees Celsius. But what I noticed is it actually prints better a little lower than that. And so what happened was I printed this temperature tower and the temperature tower, the way you use it is you look and you see that it automatically sets the G code to change the temperature in five degrees Celsius increments. And so at 225 degrees Celsius, you can see that there's almost no stringing across the surfaces. The other thing that's cool about this is this one also gives you these overhangs. So this gives you a 35 degree overhang and you can see the quality at the different temperatures. It also gives you a 45 degree overhang over here so you can see the temperature difference and how it affects the quality there. Now the other cool thing is this also does bridging perimeter. So this entire layer up here is a bridge. And so you can see when it gets above like 240, 250, it really starts to bridge and sag and come apart. And then the other one is this smaller bridge. So you can see in here, these smaller bridging layers. And again, as the temperature goes up for my particular PETG, it starts to really sag and get loose. And that's the problem I had. It was printing the first layer at 240 and then subsequent layers at 250. That was the default Prusa PETG profile that came with my Prusa Mark 3S. And so what I ended up doing is changing it to where it prints everything at 225 for this filament. And while it is five degrees lower than kind of the range that they give you on the filament, that seemed to be the sweet spot where I got perfect prints. So between changing that by using this and changing to a 0.3 millimeter layer height, I was able to cut my print times down from eight hours to six hours for two masks. I was also able to get really high quality prints out of this. So I'm hoping that helps some of you out that are involved in this and trying to help out as much as possible. Again, stop by the Slack channel Masks for Docs and find out what they need in your area. My area, they specifically asked for this style design, but in your my area, they might want the face shields or something entirely different. So just work with them and make sure you're printing something that they can actually use. And the other thing to keep in mind again is use protection don't infect any doctors, do your best to stay as clean as possible, as sterile as possible, face mask, gloves, vacuum seal, or at least seal it in a plastic bag right after it's been done printing. And that's gonna be the best thing you can do to help out people on the front lines. So get out there, get printing. I'm gonna drop all the files down in the description. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll try to connect you with the best resources in your area so that you can help out as much as possible. See you guys and stay healthy.